It's been a year since the final DLC of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was released. During the 2017 Game Awards, with Breath of the Wild having won the Game of the Year title, Nintendo had also announced that same night that the Champion's Ballad DLC would be released. The Champion's Ballad was the final update we had to Breath of the Wild. It was a great way to end off Breath of the Wild for the most part. But being honest, I wish we had a bit more to work with. So, with it being a whole year since then, I think it's time to take a look into the new possibilities of what the next main Zelda game could be. While Breath of the Wild brought so many new and fun things to the series, quickly making it my favorite game of all time, there is still a good amount of things I would like to see improved on or changed within the next game. So, in this video I'll be going through my opinions on what I'd like to see within the next Zelda game. Now, don't get me wrong, I think the direction Nintendo took with Breath of the Wild was the best yet. The game takes open world exploring to a new level. There's nothing you can't climb with no restrictions on where to go, giving a sense of complete freedom with exploration. I would love to see Nintendo continue with Breath of the Wild's open world style, but I feel like in doing so, they have strayed away from what made Zelda so special. As with Breath of the Wild, outside the four optional Divine Beasts, which take no more than an hour to complete one, you have 120 optional Sheikah Shrines, which also take no more than 5 to maybe 10 minutes per shrine. Making most of your core gameplay exploring the world itself, which of course on its own is really fun, but it doesn't really leave much else to do. You are given all your Sheikah runes from the very beginning to create your own path, leaving no room for build up. Progression in Breath of the Wild is almost gone, as you can face the final boss from the very beginning, and everything else that would help you for that is optional. It removes this sense of moving forward and feels like a giant collectathon sandbox game. After you recognize all the puzzles within the shrines and divine beasts, there's really nothing else left in the game's gameplay besides exploring Hyrule. Luckily, that never seems to get old, but even that isn't enough to make a Zelda game. What I loved so much about the older titles were the themed dungeons that held a unique set of challenges for each one. In Breath of the Wild, each dungeon is a divine beast with similar themes and puzzles all utilizing the Sheikah Slate. Even the shrines are all the same theme requiring similar solutions to each puzzle. But the dungeons from previous titles had unique weapons behind each one, requiring Link to make use of it within the dungeon while incorporating it into future puzzles and opening up areas for Link to backtrack in. It all together gave the sense of progression with each item you found. These items improved Link's arsenal and equipped him for the adventure moving forward, with each of these dungeons being themed around the item it held, making for new and interesting concepts with each one. So as mentioned, with Breath of the Wild, you get the complete opposite feeling. I would love to see Nintendo get rid of Link's Sheikah Slate for the next Zelda game and have him utilize his classic set of items. Or maybe not replace the Sheikah Slate entirely, but have it not be the only way to puzzle solve everything. Another thing I would love to see make its way within the series is some sort of online play within the game. No wait, hear me out, I still want every main Zelda title to stay as a single player game of course. But what would make these games timeless, especially titles similar to Breath of the Wild, is some sort of online game mode. This idea would be somewhat similar to how Dark Souls has its main single player story, but while also being able to connect with other heroes from their own world and story. Yes, I know. I'm comparing this game to Dark Souls, cause you know, Breath of the Wild is totally the Dark Souls of Zelda games, right? Well, not really, but hey, if Nintendo wants to do that with the next one, be my guest. But for real, I would love to have some sort of online way to face other players in Breath of the Wild. With the game having so much customization, it would be so fun to see other players builds for Link and face against them, as the game by far has the most interesting combat within the series. So with the game having so many sets of weapons, shields, and armors to customize Link with, why not have players be able to test out their builds on each other? Like imagine being teleported to the same platform you face Masko Shia on in the final trial, but this time, you're facing against another Link from another world. Whether it's just a random player or a friend of yours who's been talking magic Maddie. about his 100 plus damage Savage Lionel Sword, but you know your ancient battle axe plus plus will show him who's boss, you step onto the battlefield and battle it out. Sick. This alone would make it so much more worth it to collect all the different weapons, upgrade your different armor sets, and try out many different things within the game. Because Breath of the Wild has such a deep, unique, and fun combat system, but outside of the Lynels, there's really no other enemy who will truly challenge you. 
Once you get the champion abilities, everything is truly a piece of cake, making it almost not worth it to use anything outside your Master Sword and Hylian Shield, as everything will eventually break. But having a way to duel others with similar mindsets will get you thinking on creative and unique ways to wreak havoc on the battlefield. Because Breath of the Wild has so many unique and cool builds to customize Link with, so why not have a way where players can show off their builds to one another and battle it out? While this idea is mainly inspired from Dark Souls, I feel like it would really fit with Breath of the Wild. This would make Breath of the Wild a timeless game, as there would always be people wanting to try out new builds and face one another. Honestly, this would be a really cool way to add a true endgame to Breath of the Wild and a fun way to really give the player an incentive to collect all the things and try to max out their build to its fullest. And if that's asking for too much, as I do see this being far-fetched for something Nintendo would ever do, but hopefully it eventually happens, even something as simple as being able to see your friends score on minigames, similar to what Nintendo did with Super Mario Odyssey with Luigi's Balloon World. Giving a sense of competitiveness within the game, as you're connected with other players who played the game, this would sure go a long way and make minigames way more fun to do. Another addition I'd like to see added to the open world style of Breath of the Wild is underwater exploring. While everyone, including myself, praises Breath of the Wild for its insane depth with exploration, water seems to be the most shallow part of Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Get it? In Breath of the Wild, similar to the Wind Waker, Link can only swim above water, unable to dive underneath. These being the only two 3D Zelda games that did not allow Link to swim underwater. And I want to say both games did it for good reason, as there's just too much water in these games to add stuff underneath. While in The Wind Waker, the entire world was the giant sea, making all traveling above water, I completely get why we were unable to swim underwater or even see what's underneath it. But in Breath of the Wild, I feel like Nintendo could have improved somewhat on it. It almost feels like a punishment to land in water and have to travel through it as Link swims so badly in water, he drowns way too quickly. It's really hard to believe that Hyrule's savior, the one who can climb any mountain with no problem, has this much trouble in water. Is this Link's kryptonite water? <laughs> I really hope within the next Zelda game, Nintendo adds the ability to swim underwater, even if there isn't much to explore, just to give you the option. It makes it much more immersive. Or at least have Link be able to swim somewhat faster above water, and have him swim further without drowning so fast. Another thing that really bothered me in Breath of the Wild was its side quests. Most of the side quests were a complete joke with no decent reward. Every real good side quest was actually just a shrine quest. But in a game where almost every valuable item breaks, it's really hard to make meaningful side quests with decent rewards. So I really hope Nintendo makes unique items that won't constantly break, or ones that can be fixed similar to the champion weapons, giving value to things you find and collect. So with all this said, I think the one main thing I want to see in the next Zelda title would be more story. Breath of the Wild truly lacks with it, and I understand with it being such an open world game, it would be tough for Nintendo to build such a great and deep story around it. So I wish Nintendo would go in a slightly different direction with the next Zelda game, and have a bit more structure to a good portion of the game. Whether it's at the very beginning, towards the middle, or at the very end, and just give some sort of build up. Being able to accidentally walk into the sanctum in Hyrule Castle with no warning and face the game's final boss makes the build up the least satisfying build up to a final boss in any Zelda game. The game shouldn't feel like everything is worthless and just optional if you want to leave it that way. Give a reason for Link to rush to Hyrule Castle, a reason for him to avenge the champions that died. If Nintendo were to remove all the shrines and make actual dungeons with real unique bosses to them while keeping the open world feeling Breath of the Wild has, I can't imagine a better Zelda game than that. Nintendo has the engine and concept all made, now we just need depth to this massive world, with more lore and history to be found within the game. The Ego is such an interesting concept that was completely brushed upon. I would have loved to learn way more backstory about the Yiga, or the Sheikah, or the Hundred Years, Waiting for Link, there could have been so much added within the game, but very little is told. Maybe have the next Zelda game be a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild, where Hyrule gets rebuilt, a less empty and non-post-apocalyptic Hyrule. One without so many ruins, but life spread throughout it. A Zelda game that builds upon the unique concept of Breath of the Wild, but has more to it. 
I feel like with Nintendo having this foundation of Breath of the Wild, they can add so much more to it. So hopefully the next Zelda game does explore upon that. Similar to how Majora's Mask is to Ocarina of Time, they took all the concepts from Ocarina of Time and put it in Majora's Mask, but added a much more richer and deep story to it all, making it much more interesting while reusing assets from a previous game. So if we can get some sort of sequel similar to what Majora's Mask was to Ocarina of Time, this time for Breath of the Wild, taking Hyrule's giant massive world, but adding so much more on it and removing the shrines and divine beasts and just kind of adding a new story to it, but being in that same giant Hyrule, I can see this next Zelda game being the best one yet, and I'm so excited for what the future holds. Though this is just my opinions and speculations on what I want to see in the next Zelda game. But I'm excited for whatever Nintendo has to offer, as they haven't let me down since with the Zelda series, and I'm always excited to see what new things they can bring to the series as a whole. I'm overall excited for whatever Nintendo has to offer for the next Zelda game. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. Let me know what your thoughts are and if you agree with any of my opinions. While I'm not at all done with Breath of the Wild content, as Breath of the Wild still has many things to cover, especially with the Creating a Champion book, which recently was translated to English, which I plan on covering tons of soon. But talking about the potential of a new Zelda game is really exciting and I can't wait to see what Nintendo has in store. I really hope they deliver on some of the things I mentioned in this video. I made a video very similar to this for Breath of the Wild, and surprisingly a lot of my predictions came into Breath of the Wild. Sadly with the online thing, which is one of the things I really want most, has yet to be answered. Regardless, whenever this next Zelda game is announced, I can't wait to continue speculating and talking about all the rumors and details regarding this upcoming game. Again though, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I also want to give a special thanks to my girlfriend Sasa for the artwork throughout this video. She's a huge help to the channel, so please, if you're looking for really awesome artwork, check her stuff out. But before you go, please leave a like on the video, that would mean a lot. As always, I've been Zelda Master, and I'll see you all in the next one.